Today's topic is a case study using a weight vest to increase NEAT. Uh, James is currently recording this podcast wearing a weight vest, so if you are listening, watching on YouTube, you will be able to see that. First of all, James, how are you feeling so far? We'll go into the details of what and why we're doing this in a moment. But just, you've, it's been about a week now. How are you doing so far? Well, it's quite nostalgic, actually. It's like me being back in the police with my stab vest on. It's, uh, it's been a... A yeah, you reached for your well. radio the other day, I didn't you? I reached my radio. I literally have. I put my hands in between here. I reached my radio and I was talking to you and Andrew the other week. So it's uh, it's quite nostalgic. But week in, and it's it's inter- it's interesting. It's an interesting study. It's not just from me, obviously. Well, I'll let you explain the study, but it's it's been intriguing. I think let's get to the the facts of the matter. Is I've dropped one point five kilos in a week, and I'm feeling good. Is the honest answer. So it's uh, it's not too bad at all. So let, I'll do, do, give an introduction first and say what it's all about, and then I can dive into specifics. Afterwards. Yeah. So so the idea of this came. I was watching a video on YouTube about high energy flux diets from a guy called we both follow called Ryan Humiston, um, and it's not something I'd ever particularly heard of. And I was like, oh, this is this is interesting. And he quoted this study. Where a trainer called Eric Lee Salazar, who is a pro bodybuilder, some of you may have heard of him, uh, used weighted apparel during his contest prep to, you know, try and drop, basically to try and drop weight efficiently, quickly and efficiently without losing muscle mass and without having to go into a ridiculous deficit like he would normally have to go to. Because obviously, like, you know, bodybuilders, in order to get lean, have to significantly drop their calories. So it was an experiment to keep his neat high, and we'll talk about neat in a second if you don't know what that is, um, but but have a high energy flux diet. So, gosh, we're not going to go too deep into the science here because that's not what this is about. It's more of a discussion. Usually, you'd have a low energy flux diet, which means go into a big deficit. High energy flux diet is about keeping your calories higher, but essentially increasing your your neat and your energy output would you say that's the best way to explain it james from from what i understand yes but again it's one of those ones where like that's that's really going to the complexities of all this whereas i, I like to keep things simple stupid just my little piece of my brain that's it <laughs> well it's like usually you know you'd you'd want a let's say 500 calorie deficit so rather than creating that 500 calorie deficit by uh cutting down your food you try to increase your energy expenditure by 500 calories instead or around that there'll be a little bit of give and take some from diet some from uh, exercise and neat but essentially that's that's the idea so you keep your nutrition your calories higher but expend more energy um so that's what uh, that's what we're doing with the uh, with the weight vest so initially uh, in this study the guy went into a small deficit lost a, a bit of weight and then after four weeks, he started wearing a weight vest and he added, I think it was 12 pounds to basically take him back to his original starting weight. So it's kind of trying to trick your metabolism, um, essentially. Would you, again, would you uh, would you agree, James? Yeah, I think that, that's in very simple layman terms. Yeah, absolutely. I think what we need is some really fancy ass scientists to come explain this properly to us. Because we don't want to butcher this whole study at all, but... That's enough. That's the premise. Is basically what it is. It's like keep adding weight, and as he loses weight, keep adding weight to replenish that weight he's lost. Exactly, as you say, to to keep him around his original starting weight. Because again, it's not something I'd thought about. Because obviously, we recommend all our clients do at least seven thousand, ideally ten thousand steps a day. But if you're doing ten thousand steps a day and you weigh one hundred and eighty pounds, if you lose fifteen pounds, and you're suddenly one hundred and sixty-five pounds, and you still do those ten thousand steps a day you're not going to burn as much energy doing those uh, steps. So therefore, you have to drop your calories, drop your calories, drop your calories. And that's where you start getting into uh, getting into problems. So you've got to increase your energy output. You've got to increase your needs. So that's what this is all about. We're trying to keep James's calories high, artificially higher um, as he drops weight. And as you say, you've dropped about 1.5 kilos so far. Uh, so we had to put another kilo in your vest today, didn't we? Exactly. That was another kilo going in today. And that's... That's the interesting thing. So on day one, after wearing the vest, I had it on for about six and a half hours uh, in total. And, and it has its practicalities. It's quite useful because if I'm at home working at a stand-up desk, it works quite well. No one's around. I can I can wear it. I don't have to feel self-conscious. 
you know, it's not an issue at all. I can imagine though, if people wear this at the office, they would look self-conscious and they wouldn't do it because they just look weird, basically. How so, and I understand also the idea if you walk to the shops in this weight vest, you get lots of funny looks because it looks like a stab vest. It looks like a bulletproof vest. It looks like you're going to war or expecting to be shot at any given time. So I totally understand that aspect. So it's not maybe practical in those terms, but during the day, I don't know. I didn't notice it except for the first day where I could feel the weight in my shoulders. And like, oh, I'm a bit tight. That's quite heavy. Over the course of the week, you just the body just adapts to it. And I was like, oh, that's, that's fairly normal. And when you take it off, you feel really light, you feel really bouncy. I've noticed it today because I've added the extra kilo in today. And even that it's just that one kilo, which is 2.2 pounds, for those who don't know, it's made a difference. I can feel it on my shoulders. Oh, that's gone heavy again, just exactly what it was last week. So yeah, it's it's an interesting you know, point of view. It's, it's an interesting practicality issues to, behind it, I think. I think you have to take it on and off quite a lot to be doing do certain things. I tried doing a yoga session with it on in, and that just failed miserably, so I wouldn't recommend doing that to anybody. But you do have to take it on and off and you have to be aware of your surroundings, what you're doing. And what I've tend to done is I've gone, I've worn it during the day and then at night time, I go for a 30 minute walk at night time when it's dark, I can put a jacket over the top of it and it's just easy to do for a 30 minute walk to boost and get those steps at the end of the day. But all in all, it's, it's fairly relatively easy and straight going, but I wouldn't recommend it to people who are new. I think people, you have to have a level of training behind you, I think. That's a, that's a really important factor. And I think you have to have a level of strength behind you as well, I think, to, to support it, because it's a long period of time. And also maybe increase, I'm fairly used to wearing, um, like taking, taking ruck packs up mountains and carrying stuff all the time. So I'm fairly used to that. So my body's adapted quite well. But I can imagine if you're not used to that, then I'd definitely do it slowly. And I wouldn't start with five kilos like I started with. I'd maybe start with one kilo. Yeah, so as as uh, Eric Salazar did in his experiment, we you are in an initial deficit, um, but we're going to keep that small. As, we, as you drop weight, we're not going to, you know, have to make that deficit lower and lower and lower. We're going to, the idea is to keep that deficit about the same, um, so essentially you will be eating more for your body weight um but increase the weight vest to sort of to keep you at your original starting weight and and see what happens that's the premise of what we're doing yep exactly so we to be to be exact for those who want to know i've dropped my calories down to 2025 calories per day which is 400 calorie deficit for me so we've followed our principles of dieting so we like to use the 68 79 and uh, no, sorry 67 78 and 79 percent of calories 89 uh, percent <laughs> There you go. Same thing. Like we like to use those those rules as how we follow. So we've followed our principles, but applying the strategy on top of it to see how it works. It's all about systems and your strategies. So we're just adding this layer of complexity to it to see how it impacts it. So so far, like I said, it's only been a week, and anything can happen in a week. But I've remained consistently under calories uh, to where I need to get to. I've trained consistently, and I've eaten fairly well too. So it's everything's fallen into the mix. Now one and a half kilos is quite a lot. If, I'm, if we're being honest, so it may be a little bit too much, but we're going to see how it goes at the end of this week to see what happens over two weeks to then maybe adjust it. Maybe I need to increase my calories a little bit more to offset this because we don't want to go too fast in terms of weight loss because it's, it's then I'm losing muscle mass then too fast. Yeah, exactly. So you, we want to preserve, and that was that was the idea about the original um, experiment about trying to preserve muscle mass as well. Um, you know, the, the use of the weight vest should help preserve your muscle mass. And what we'd usually do, we'd go back to maintenance, obviously, which we will do with you, but then we'd recalculate your deficit based on your current body weight. So that's why I say your calories would drop even lower, but we are not going to do that. We're going to recalculate them. It, well, you'll just be back to basically what you're on now. Even when, even as your weight drops, you will not go below these calories. You might actually, as you say, because you've dropped a significant amount, we might actually make your deficit even smaller. Um, which means you can have more food, mate. Won't that be great? Yes, I hope so. I mean, it'd be great. And that's the worst thing, because when you go into a deficit and you want to get to a certain level, like the lower you go and you have to go there to get to a certain, in most circumstances, it's miserable. You're tired, you're brain foggy, you're irritable, you can't train properly. It's not a nice place. Fat loss is horrible. Fat loss is horrendous when you're trying to do this. And for those who want to know why am I doing this, well, I'm going to the World Cup in South Africa in February. I want to be at the best performance level weight in and I can be, which means getting my body fat percentage down towards 10%. So that's that's where we're going towards. That's what I'm trying to work towards as soon as possible so I can then maintain it and train as hard as possible ready for the World Cup. So I don't, I'm not going in in a deficit. 
I'm going in feeling great. So that's that's what we're doing. That's what we're working towards. And we're just showing, we read this, we thought, wow, this is interesting. It's maybe something I can do at home. I'm trying it out. And here we go, guys. I'm just sharing with you all now. So if you see me on with a, a weight vest over the next few weeks doing podcasts, that's why. The other interesting thing, again, this I'm going to not, not try to get too sciencey because I don't fully understand it all myself. The something called gravitostat, uh, gra- gravitostat, gravitostat, I'm not exactly 100% sure how you pronounce it. But again, this is something I'd never heard of, never come across until I read this article. I think it has been confirmed in humans, although they've done most experiments on mice. Um, just want to point that out. So essentially, it's a body weight regulating, I think it's a hormone, I think, uh, in your bones, essentially. Um, and they and it gets triggered when when you if you get too heavy your body is supposed to your bones this gravitas is supposed to notice that you're too heavy and you know essentially help you lose weight but the the reason they don't think it's triggered in humans as much is because we sit a lot so our bones don't carry our weight as much anymore which are you know chairs take our weight instead so that is part of the part of the thing about wearing the weight vest and standing up a lot and obviously walking around a lot is to trigger this um gravitostat uh, to to help regulate your weight, I can't I can't really go go any more into it than that. That's all I know right now. <laughs> James, you got anything to add to that? I, I can't I, I can't even I can't even help you out there because I know nothing about, nothing about it until we read that study. So I can't really comment at all. So that's it's ju- it's just it. really interesting that you're you know uh, as far as we understand it, your bones have a body weight regulation. Again, I'm going to call it a hormone. Don't know whether it is uh, within them, and it, which is triggered when you uh, when they when they feel weight on them and as i say because because we sit a lot uh these these hormones are not being triggered in people i say who knows we have no idea i can't comment on that i don't really know enough about it this is like i said i think we're becoming like more of a breaking news type thing just to to question and ask people in the community to tell us know more about it because we 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 want to learn about it that's that's the key thing here we want to learn more about it see how it applies but i think the other thing i've got to mention is like don't do this if you're just sitting down behind a desk all day that's definitely not something that's going to work for you. I'm standing up all day. I prefer at a stand-up desk. That's how I work and that's how I operate. Like sitting at a desk just kills me, quite literally. My soul, my ass, my everything, right? It just literally just destroys me. So, you know, like it's it's just everything. So like, yeah, just bear that in mind. Make sure you're doing this standing up. Don't just add more load to you sitting down. That's just silly. Exactly. And it won't, it won't have the same desired effect, uh, will it, as, as far as we understand this gravita stat hormone it won't have the same side effect the other thing is we're going to have to come back and do another episode about this because the question i posed to you before we started recording is how do we reverse you out of this that's a problem because just taking the weight vest off will not be a great idea so i thought okay well do we potentially reverse diet you maybe but also take a kilo out of the weight vest each week and you know slowly tr- try and gently trick the metabolism you know without giving it a shock what if we reverse back up normally with the same weight in the vest and then when i get back to maintenance i then take a kilo off each week hmm. yeah yeah so i'm then doing it afterwards so it's taking the weight off after that so you reverse back up yeah keeping your calories at maintenance taking the weight vest off gradually but not putting on any weight obviously that's uh that's going to be the idea. We'll have to. We'll have to see. Exactly. Stay tuned, people. Stay tuned. Indeed, uh, that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you <laughs> feel free to go out and research what on earth gravitas that is, and let me know. Uh, <laughs> more scientific brains than me might uh, have a little bit of a better explanation. Uh, but please don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. And if you want to find out more about our training system, go to strengthmanners.com forward slash system and get our free ebook.